I am going to turn Port Merrick into my own Hourglass PvP fortress. My goal, to reach champion status without leaving this outpost. That doesn't mean, however, I'm not going to put ourselves in the best possible position for victory, which, it turns out, is inside this small harbor. Only one way in and out, and the only way to defeat us will be to sink us. And to make sure of that, I'm going to use my own chain shot to bring our mass down, ensuring that even if we're boarded, it'll take our opponent time to repair. The next step would be gathering supplies, cannonballs, wood, and plenty of storage for constant resupplying from the island's barrels that'll allow us near endless amounts of goodies. It was time to pop on the hourglass. No war map since we're defending. Instead, it was cargo time. That's right, you heard me. PvP and cargo are a match made in heaven. You may have seen Toxie Sinclair and Farina show off how you can stack cargo on an hourglass ship for easy faction stash credit. But basically, the more cargo on your ship, the more credit received. We had only managed to achieve the first level of faction stash when our first invasion occurred. Now within range of our cannon line, it was time to strike. We laid into them with a full volley of cannon across the wall. Then, moving to the cannon on board their ship, we continued to trade volleys with our opponent who was presumably confused as to how to approach the situation. I feel like this was confirmed when they proceeded to anchor their ship a short distance from the outpost. Knowing this was a great opportunity, I sword dashed into the water and made my way over. Their ship was empty and the boundary with their shroud not that far off. If I could keep their ship moving, it would be my win. Of course, it wouldn't be as simple as that. That was luck. It was now just a matter of staying alive and making sure that the ship headed to the edge. My opponent was desperate and even managed to knock me off their ship and lower the anchor. But it was too late. GG's, our first win. I gotta admit, it's such a satisfying feeling to watch that street ticker climb up and pay attention to how much our guardian level climbs with this first victory as well. You'll want to compare it to something else a bit later on this video. We begin collecting more merchant goods. Again, our faction stash starts to climb, first to grade two, then to grade three. Another invasion struck. Time to put our fortress to work again. Unfortunately, I wasn't nearly as accurate with my cannon shots this go around when the opportunity presented itself. It seemed I was always just slightly off with my angles and the shots would go above the target. I did manage to get a few shots at their mass our ship's cannon, which allowed me precious time to repair my ship as it took on water. Even though our ship was tucked away, it definitely was not invincible. Our opponent attempted a different strategy this go around and cannon themselves to the island. They had the ghost curse, so they at least had spent some time in hourglass, but we couldn't be deterred. It was go time. I absolutely should have been dead. We traded deaths and were nearly sunk when the power of the bucket saved us from certain annihilation. Once my ship was repaired, I managed to sneak aboard theirs while they headed towards mine. If this was a game of who could eliminate the other first, I knew I had the advantage here. My opponent would need to figure out how to sink me, presumably through firebombs, when all I had to do was sail their ship out of bounds. They never even knew what happened before it was our win. That's two. Back to the faction stash grind, grade four, and finally we reached a full grade five stash on our ship. We also spent some time resupplying from barrels when our third invasion was underway. I actually managed to catch her coming out of the water, which was a neat visual. Cannon shots on the wall were okay, but not great. I think the trick here is maintaining a steady firing line. These cannons don't bob in the water like those on ships do. I did manage to hit her a few times, which must have caused the other player some concern because their strategy shifted from heading toward the outpost to sailing away from it, trying to tuck behind some rocks. We weren't gonna let that deter us. Time to go on another underwater adventure. We avoided their blunderbuss attack and managed to get on board their vessel. Knocking them into the water, it was now our advantage. You could say we had the high ground, or high deck. 
anyway. As long as we didn't let them back on board their ship and were able to raise their anchor, it would be our win. It went back and forth, but finally we were able to knock them down and set sail. And it was here that I felt the worst about Hourglass that I had in a while. I did not deserve to get that knockout. I would totally understand if that player was just cursing me out. They seemed absolutely defeated, as evidenced by the fact that they didn't go to the ferry immediately. In fact, they never returned again, and it was our win. That makes three. And just about a full level earned in Hourglass from one victory thanks to the Grade 5 stash. So here we were, on a three streak, with one more victory to go before we would earn champion status. I was also curious how many levels we'd earn after leaving Hourglass with a grade 5 stash and a 4 streak. But before that would come to fruition, we'd have to have one more battle. And this one seemed cursed from the get-go. First, the opposing ship didn't spawn where I expected. In fact, because of how poor Merrick is laid out, I couldn't see her until she was practically on my ship's cannon line. Right away, I understood that this was a player who played a lot of Hourglass. They didn't seem deterred at all by our ship's positioning, and this in fact reveals one of the biggest weaknesses of this strategy. Against a great opponent, your ship is a sitting duck. No matter how many cannons there are on Port Merrick, if you focus your efforts on putting holes into the opposing ship, they will be in trouble. And trust me, we were absolutely in trouble. There was not a time where I ever felt like I had the advantage in this battle. My opponent put various amounts of pressure on, whether it was from their ship or through Avatar combat. We'd get lucky with a few swipes with our sword here and there, but their double gunning was on point. Over the course of the battle, I felt the momentum totally shift toward my opponent. I was doing all that I could just to keep up with him, but I will be the first to tell you that this bard does not sweat in Avatar PvP all that well. Eventually, it became just a matter of time, and in the end, we lost. But we still had one more thing left to say. GG's. GG's, dude. It was definitely uh, different, I guess. So we didn't get our champion streak, but would I still consider this a viable method for Hourglass? Honestly? No. Let me explain. It may not have seemed all that long watching this video, but it took over four hours to get those four matches recorded. The reason? If a server is full, or if there are other ships in the nearby area, you won't get invaded, which is a massive deterrent to choosing to defend, where you can simply dive and be in a match within a few minutes. Sure, you can resupply, but other than fishing, it's not really fun to just wait around. But was it fun to use Port Merrick's cannons on opposing ships when they did show up? Absolutely. I'm not sure what they're there for otherwise. One thing I did note, however, was that even though our cargo was damaged and eventually was declared late, our faction stash remained at grade 5. So if you are defending, just grab some cargo along with it for easier leveling. Until next time, this is John Bardcore signing out, saying so long and take care.